because what we're going to talk about is a certain aspect of grace doesn't seem very graceful, and it's something you get a lot of pushback on from the culture and from the world, so we're going to talk about that. But uh, if you haven't been here in a while, or you've been here every other Sunday, which a lot of people have to do because of work or whatever, let me kind of catch you up on where we are. Week one, uh, we gave a definition of grace. We said that grace is the unmerited, undeserved, unearned kindness and favor of God what grace is. And then uh, in week two, we looked at not only uh, are you saved by grace, but you're saved by grace for good works. Something in us that says, you know, works got to come in place somewhere. So you're saved by grace for good works. And we said good works are what? Good works are good. All right, good works are good. So we're, we're, we're saved by grace for good works. And then uh, last week, we talked about God's amazing, unchanging grace. We talked about the fact that not only does grace save me, but the same grace that saved me is the same grace that keeps me. And if you've ever come to Jesus sincerely with your heart, asking Jesus to save you, and even though you don't always live up to it, and I don't always live up to it, and we don't always walk the straight and narrow and all that, doesn't matter, because what God did by His grace, He keeps by His grace. And you will never, ever, ever lose what God has given you by His grace. How many are you happy about that? Say a big amen today, all right? And so, you know, it's, it's, an amazing, it's an amazing thing. He, uh, he saves me by grace. He keeps me by grace. Not only does he promise me that, but listen to this. He swears it to you. And God can swear by no other greater than himself. So God cannot lie, and he will not lie. Now, today, I want you to, I want you to kind of, if you're not a note taker or whatever, you don't have a pen or a pencil or whatever, you might want to you might want to get this uh, get it online next week or whatever. But you're going to want to take notes on this because we're going to talk about something today that we get a lot of pushback from from the culture, and you're going to get pushed. You probably already gotten pushback about this from your family. We get pushback on this from people out in the world, and it's one of those aspects of grace. I'll be honest with you. On the surface, it doesn't seem like grace at all. Uh, and you're going to see today that this is the most amazing thing about grace, but as far as the world is concerned, as far as some of your family members are concerned, and as far as this culture is concerned, and you really see it on the media and everything else, it doesn't seem like grace, but it is grace. And so we're going to talk about, and we're going to examine today, this business of Jesus being the only way to heaven. Jesus being the only way way to heaven. Let's face it, as far as the culture is concerned, that doesn't sound very crazy. As far as the world is concerned, that sounds closed-minded. As far as the world is concerned, that sounds arrogant. And you get pushback on it all the time, and you really see it in the media all the time, where people say, you mean to tell me that you Christians believe that you're the only ones going to heaven? You mean to tell me you believe that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. And when I say that, you get pushed back. Matter of fact, when I say that, there are some in this room right now you don't like for me to say that. Because we live in a cult and we live in a world today, we live in a culture that is going overboard to make sure that we do not segregate or that we do not leave out all the other religions. We're going to overboard to make sure that other religions are valid and other religions fit in. And not to do that is you're not seen tolerant and you're seen bigoted and arrogant, and the world doesn't like that. And when I say, when I get up before you in this good crowd today, and I say, Jesus is the only way to heaven. More important, when I say, all other religions in the world are wrong. Then you get the silence that we're getting right now. You get pushback on it. Because, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. The world will look at us and say, you mean to tell me you Baptists? You think that you're the only ones? I want to tell you something right now. What I believe, I do not believe because I'm a Baptist. And what I believe, I do not believe because I'm religious and I have any kind of religion. What I believe, I believe I got from the lips of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And I would tell you and I would agree with you that all the world religions have their valid points and all world religions are good and fine if I had a religion. But when I have Jesus, I don't have religion. I have a relationship with the one true living God. Somebody say amen. Amen? That's right. And when I say that Jesus is the only way to heaven, I'm getting pushback from some of you right now. And some of you young people, if you say that in, 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 in the crowd that you hang around with, you're going to get eyes rolled. 
And, and, and trust me, when your children get older and they become adult children, you're going to get pushed back from them as well. And it seems so intolerant to have the arrogance and the audacity for a preacher to get up in front of people and say, Jesus is the only way to heaven. And it could be the one thing that keeps people from trusting Jesus in the first place. Because let's face it, it seems arrogant, it seems bigoted, it seems intolerant. But I'm going to show you today, if, you, if you're listening to me, come on, come on, I want to know, if, are, are you with me today? Are you going to listen to me today? Say a big amen, amen. Because you guys have been kind of quiet today. And I don't like quiet. And I'm going to tell you, if you don't encourage me what I preach, I preach longer. So the more you encourage me, the shorter I preach. Can anybody get with that? All right? Okay, so. All right, there you go. I'll, I'll take that. But today, that was a pity. But anyway, so, but, but today, I'm going to show you that teaching and preaching that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven is not only not tolerant, but it is not being cruel. To teach that there are many ways to heaven, to teach that all you've got to be is sincere, that is cruelty at its highest point. To teach that it's all up to you, to teach that you are the captain of your own faith, to rest your eternal existence. Because it doesn't matter if you're a Christian or a non-Christian or a believer or a non-believer. It doesn't matter if you're an atheist. It doesn't matter who you are, what religion you are, if you're no kind of religion whatsoever. You are a never-dying soul that was created by God. I don't care whether you believe that or not. You can believe your evolution or whatever. But I'm telling you, you are a never-dying, living, breathing soul. And you will be spending eternity somewhere. And to teach that it's up to you, to teach that it's Religion is, in fact, the most cruel thing that could be propagated on the face of the earth. And I will show you today that believing and teaching that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven is indeed full of grace and full of mercy. And we're going to see that today. And by the way, you need to understand what I believe about this is not me. It's not, it's not my opinion. It's not me being a Baptist. I wouldn't give you a plug nickel for that. What I believe I got from Jesus himself. I'm not telling you anything that's my opinion. You don't need to hear my opinion. I don't need to hear your opinion. But I'm getting it from Jesus himself. So everybody take your Bible. Turn with me, please, to the Gospel of John and chapter 14. The Gospel of John and uh, chapter 14. And the words will be up here uh, on the screen. And uh, if you don't have a Bible, we'll be glad to get you a Bible. Uh, but click your Bible, turn in your Bible, turn on your Bible, wherever you can. Get to John chapter 14, look at verse 1. Very familiar passage of Scripture, Jesus said this. If, uh, if you have a Bible and the words of Jesus are written in red, you'll know this is all Jesus, okay? He said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you into myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Now Thomas said to him, by the way, Thomas is one of his disciples. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, and how can we know the way? Lord, there's all kinds of opinions out there. Who's right and who's wrong? Pharisees say one thing. The uh, Sanhedrin says one thing. The Romans say one thing. The heathen nations say one thing. How can we know the way? And that's a good question. And Jesus is not going to leave him hanging. Listen to what Jesus said in verse 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way. Anybody believe that? Say amen. I'm the way, the truth, the life. No one comes unto the Father except through me. He said no one, no one, no boy, no girl, no man, no woman, no one comes unto the Father except through me, which also begs us to want to scream, but what about? What about sincere people? Well, what about devout people? What about devoted people? Yeah, they may, they may not be devoted to the religion that I'm devoted to, but what about them? And it just kind of begs us to scream out, yeah, Jesus, but what about? What about my family? What about, my, what about sincere people? What about that? And, that's, and I would agree with you once again if all we had was religion. But how many of you know knowing Jesus is not religion, it's a relationship? And so... 
Now, all religions have some things in common, and here's where you really need to take notes, because you're going to get pushback on this, and I'm going to give you some very practical things that you can help people to see, and, uh, and that you can talk about around the water cooler, around the, uh, you know, around the supper table, or whatever. So you might want to, you, you're going to need this. If you didn't have, bring a pen or a pencil, whatever, get this, get this message. You can get it online next week, whatever, in a couple of hours, really. But just, just get this, and once you write it, because you're going to get pushback on this. And so uh, I, want, I want you to see this. Now, first of all, all religions have something in common. It doesn't matter what religion it is. If it's a world religion, there are some things that all religions have in common. Number one, they all have rules and regulations on how things ought to be and ought not to be done. Everybody agree with that? Every religion has rules and regulations, whether it's man-made or whether they sincere and they, they think it came from God or it came from an inner, you know, inner being or whatever it may be. All religions have their own way of doing things, the things you ought to do and you ought not to do. And number two, all religions know that everybody within that religion fails at one point or another. That nobody gets it totally right. That, that no Muslim gets it. doesn't matter how devout they are, but nobody gets it totally right. And we know that, and they know that. And so because of that, the, the third thing I want you to see is that religion leaves you with this question. Religion leaves you with this question, well, what do I do if I don't get it right? No matter what religion you have, make it up. Even if, even if you're an atheist today, you believe something. You're putting your faith and trust in you. And I'm telling you, that ain't, that ain't a whole lot to go on. But the bottom line is, you some kind of religion. What do you do when you don't get it right? Well, religion will tell you this. If you don't get it right, you know you failed, and you know you do. Religion will tell you, well, what you need to do is you need to do better. You need to be more devout. You, you, you need to more, be more devoted. You need to get your act together. You need to, you know, bow down more and give more and do more and whatever your religion requires you to do. You just need to be more devout. But there's something in us that says, you know what? I'm trying my best. I'm trying to be sincere as I know how to be. You know, I'm going to church. I'm trying to do, you know, what I know to do. And, and there's just something in us that says, you know what? I know I fail, but... But, but what do I do? What, what do I do about that? And, and religion's answer is just do more. Religion's answer is to work harder and, and do better. And, and so that's the worst religion. And I can't tell you how many people, you know, will say, you know, I, I can't believe that you guys believe that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. And I can't tell you how many people that I share the gospel with. And, and, and we talk about the gospel and, and we talk about grace and, and how Jesus saves you by his grace. No works, no walking the straight and narrow. And I can't tell you how many people I will share the plain gospel with only to have them turn around and say, well, you know, preacher, I know I need to get back in church. I know I need to quit drinking. I know I, know I need to get my life. I didn't say anything about you getting your life together. I didn't say anything about you getting in church. I didn't say anything about you getting your act together. I'm saying if you want to go to heaven, come to Jesus. And all God's people say and yet, we say that, and even some people here today would give a pushback on that and say, well, my grandmama's very sincere. My, 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 my brothers and sisters, they're sincere. They're Mormons, or they're just agnostic. You mean to tell me that they're not going to make it to heaven? The audacity of that. And so we, we, we look at that and, and so we understand that the, that the bottom line to all of this has to do with, with behavior and not belief. And, and all of the world religions and all the religions, of, and even if you're an agnostic or an atheist, it all comes down to belief, uh, to uh, behavior over belief. And so basically what it boils down to and what basically all world religions basically have in common is the theory that all good people go to heaven. All good people go to heaven. That's, and that's basically right. all good, all sincere people go to heaven. All you got to do is be sincere, and, 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 and that's, that's, that's kind of the bottom line of where we're at. All good people. And there's only one, there's some problems with that, and that's what we're going to look at, because this business of all good people go to heaven is, in fact, cruel. It is, in fact, intolerant. It is, in fact, devastating that all good people go to heaven or that all sincere people go 
to heaven. I'm going to give you several reasons why that is. Now, first of all, it seems right for several reasons to say that all sincere people go to heaven and all good people go to heaven or go to Nirvana or go to wherever you think they go. It seems good and right for several reasons. Number one, it seems fair. Good things ought to happen to good people. Good things ought to happen to good people. Number two, you know, here, here's the thing about all good people. Here's one of the problems with all good people go to heaven is that I make the cut. In other words, I've, I've never heard anybody say, all good people go to heaven and I'm not one of them. That what I hear is all good people go to heaven and I'm one of them. I made the cut. Surely, I'm going to go to heaven or I'm going to go to the next life because, you know, I, yes, I, I'm not perfect. Duh, we know that. But I'm not as bad as somebody else. So, you know, I, I make the cut. I, I made the grade. Number three, it motivates you to be good. If all good people go to heaven, you don't want to do bad. You want to do better and motivates you to do good. So that seems right. Number four, it's very consistent with the idea of a good God. It's very consistent with the idea of a good God. But what I want you to see, that all good people go to heaven theology or philosophy is indeed very, very unkind and very cruel. And uh, you're going to see that, okay? Now, it seems tolerant, but it's not. Let me give you several reasons. Number one, you might want to write this down. All good people, all good, sincere people go to heaven. If you believe that, there's no clear standard to go on who determines what is good and what is bad. I mean, if, if all good people go to heaven, let me ask you a question. How good do you have to be? If all sincere people go to heaven, how sincere do you have to be? And the bottom line is you don't know, I don't know, they don't know, Mormons don't know, Muslims don't know, uh, you know, Taoism doesn't know, Confucius don't know, Buddhism don't know. I mean, nobody knows. How good? Who, where's the line? Who draws the line? Who is the standard that says you're good enough, you're not good enough? You're sincere enough, you're not sincere enough. It's cruel. No, it's all left open. It's arbitrary. Nobody knows. And how cruel can that be? Your eternal existence is too important to be left up to an arbitrary philosophy. And all God's people say that. Let's suppose you go to a class. Let's say you're, you're taking a college class. And you go and you're there for the first semester. And the professor gets up and says, okay, guys, I want to tell you something. We're going to take a test. And the test is going to be your whole grade. And if you don't pass the test, you fail. Well, hands are going to go up all, okay, well, uh, now, okay, when are you going to give us that? I'm not going to tell you. Uh, well, is it going to, I mean, is it going to be, is it going to be at the end of the semester? Could be. Could be at the first semester. Could be in the middle semester. I mean, well, is passing 70%, is, is 70 passing? I'm not going to tell you. I'm not, not going to tell you that. Well, are you, are you going to give, are, do we have, are you going to lecture? No, I'm not going to lecture. Are, are you going to, are you going to, are you go, is there a book to read? No, 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 there's no book to read. I mean, are you, going, are, are you going to, you know, are you going to give us some help? Are you going to give us some notes? Are you, are you going to, no, 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 you just got to pass the test. You don't know when it's going to be, and I'm not going to help you, and I'm not going to tell you. Good luck. See y'all later. Would you not drop that class? Would you not say, listen, that, that professor, that is, un, that is unrealistic. Let's suppose, let's, let's suppose you're, you're running a marathon. Now, I understand that there are people in this room that actually enjoy running. You are crazy. This body is built for comfort and not speed. Can I get an amen? Amen? Chris. Chris runs marathons. He runs. You know, we'll be meeting and he'll say, oh, Pastor, I got I got I to I go run 10 miles a day. And I'll say, well, I got to eat 10 Krispy Kreme donuts today, buddy. How do you think about that? Anybody with me? You know what, you know what, you know what people say? They say, well, press, Pastor, now, no, no, no kidding aside, you're, you're kind of big. But if you ran and you got help, you'd, really, you'd live longer. As a matter of fact, if you were a runner, the, the statistics say you would live in, on an average of four years longer than everybody else. Well, you know what? I've checked those four years on people. They're usually not good four years. I'm going to skip those. Can I get an amen? Amen? <laughs> and while I eat my Krispy Kreme donuts and I die, it'll take the undertaker two days to get the smile off my face. You know what I'm saying? But they're going to have to put a ton of makeup on you runners for your racked up body. Can I get an amen? Amen? You know what I'm saying? Run, run, running. 
You go ahead. Y'all run. I'll watch you. <laughs> but let's suppose you enter a race. Let, let's suppose you're in a marathon. And you show up. They say, hey, we're going to have a race. Have a... And you show up and say, hey, okay, I'm ready to run. How far are we going to run? Well, we, we aren't going to tell you. Well, 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 what's the course? Well, we're not going to tell you. Well, how am I'm, 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 I'm going to know when I'm finished? Well, we'll, we'll let you know when, when you finish. You'll, you'll find out. Well, you know, so, so I don't know how far I'm going to run, and I don't know where the course is, and I don't even know when I'm going to cross the finish line. They said, that's right. Ready, go. That's just a stupid race. That's not even kind. And yet, come on, come on, come on. Hundreds of thousands and millions and even billions of people rest their eternal existence on something that's that unreliable. How do I get to heaven? How do you think? Well, I guess I got to be good. Will somebody tell me how good I got to be? Well, we don't know. Well, will somebody tell me what's going to happen to me when I die? Well, we don't know. You want to you want to bank on that? You think that you think that's tolerant? You think every, every good person goes to heaven? Every sincere person goes to heaven? You think that's tolerant and healthy and good? And the world says, yes. This culture says, yes. And it's sad because it's not good and it's not healthy and it's not right. And how many of you say amen? God has a better way for you not only that you you, you know you, you don't you don't know where the line is you know you, you you don't know when the starting point is you know none of that and then thirdly to, to believe that all all good people go to heaven all sincere people go to heaven I want you to listen to me it makes Jesus a liar now I know I know there's nobody here today that would say Jesus you're a liar I get that. No, nobody, nobody would say that. But the bottom line is Jesus said this. Jesus said. I'm not making this. It's not some Baptist preacher said. But Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and life. No, nobody comes unto the Father except through me. And every time you say that, somebody says, yeah, yeah, well, that's not what he meant. Or, or, or he didn't say that. The early church said that. Or some preachers got together and they said that to depress people and to make people accountable to their religion. But Jesus did say that, and, and the bottom line is he, he, he meant that. And, and so, and, and so to, to say otherwise, even though you wouldn't say it, you're saying, Jesus, you're not reliable, you're not truthful, and you're not honest. You're a liar. And of course, you would never, you would never say that whatsoever. But I want you to listen to me and listen well. And, 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 and hear me today. Hear my heart. Jesus, not one time in the Bible, not one time Genesis through Revelation, And certainly not one time in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John where we find the recorded words of Jesus, not one time did Jesus ever say, good people go to heaven. Now, the bottom line is what you would do, if you thought good people go to heaven, then you must have thought you got that out of the good book. You know, and and so that's what we do. We go to the Bible and we go go to the good book. And I, and I I want you to see where... The good book ain't as good as you think it is. Everybody turn your Bibles, turn to Romans chapter 3, very quickly. Romans chapter 3, and I want you to see this. Because we go to the good book. But if you're going to the good book to think that that's going to teach you how to be good, you're going to be woefully disappointed. Because the good book ain't that good. And I'm going to tell you what I'm talking about, and you'll see it. Romans chapter 3, beginning at verse 10. Listen to this. Follow along. Romans 3, 10. As it is written, there's none righteous. How many are righteous? None, none righteous. Now, in case, and listen, 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 in case you're, in case you're going to say, yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know those Yahoos out there, they ain't righteous, but I ain't that bad. So, just in case you're going to play the I ain't that bad card, you're going to go that route, he, he nails it down. He said, There's none righteous, no, not one. Basically, he's saying, That means you, Bubba. There's none righteous, and that includes me, and that includes you, not even one. Then he goes on. He said, I'm going to nail this down. I want you to get this. Look at verse 11. There is none who understands. How many understand? 
None who understand. There is none who seeks after God. How many people seek after God? None. None who seeks after God. Look at verse 12. They have all turned aside. They have together become unprofitable. And just in case you still ain't getting it, there is none who does good. No, not one. Nobody. I know you didn't come. I know you didn't get all dressed up to hear this. I know you didn't come to church to hear this. But I'm just telling you, every single man, woman, boy, or girl, and the sound of my voice in this city, in this country, in this world, nobody is good. All good people go to heaven is a flawed philosophy for the very reason there ain't no good people in all God's people's heads. And you're being told a lie. The culture's been told a lie. And the world out there is buying into a lie. And some of you are buying into a lie. Well, I ain't that bad. You're not that bad if somebody else is your standard. But look what he says going down. And just in case you still ain't getting it, just in case you still want to make your case and tell your sad story, look what he says in verse 23. For how many have sinned? All have sinned. By the way, you know what the Greek word for all is? All. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. You know what he's saying? He said, listen, listen, come on, come on. You want to stack your life up to your neighbor? You can probably do pretty good. You, you want to stack, listen, I, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how bad we are in this room. I promise you, we can find somebody else that ain't so good. Can I get an amen? You know what I'm saying? So, so the bottom line, God said, listen, your neighbor ain't your standard. The preacher ain't your standard. Nobody else is your standard. The prostitute ain't your standard. The pimp ain't your standard. God said, I'm your standard. Stack your life up against mine. How do you like me now? How's that working for you? God says, you ain't good enough. You just don't make the cut. You just don't do it. Now, I want you to nail this down very quickly. Turn with me, please, to the Gospel of Luke and chapter 23. If you're still wanting to hold on to the all good people go to heaven scenario, follow me. Luke chapter 23, here it is. Beginning at verse 32. There are also two others, criminals, criminals. Everybody say criminals. By the way, the root word for criminals here is somebody who practices crime. These guys who not did one thing got caught. They practiced crime. They were criminals. They practiced crime. They were no good. So there were, there were two others, criminals, led with him, talking about Jesus, to be put to death. We're talking about the cross now. Then one of the criminals who, hanged, who was hanged blasphemed him, saying, If you're the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Don't you even fear God, seeing you are under the same condemnation? We indeed justly, for we receive the due reward for our deeds. By the way, by the way, come on, come on. Did you notice what Jesus, Jesus doesn't stop the guy and say, No, 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 no way. It's okay. No, no, no. Jesus said, No, you're right. You deserve this. You, you deserve to die for your crimes. What Jesus, basically, because he didn't say anything, that's basically what he's saying. Verse 41, and we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward for our deeds. But this man, talking about Jesus, has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said, I'm sorry, man. I'd like to. But uh, you just didn't make the cut. I wish somebody had told you that. Uh, I never saw you in the synagogue. I never saw you in the temple. Uh, I've never seen you observe Passover. You were too busy doing your own thing, committing your own crimes. I'm sorry. I would love to, but you didn't make the grade. He didn't say that. And I'm so glad he didn't say it. Listen to what he said. And Jesus, Jesus said, verse 43, Assuredly, or surely, finally, 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 come on, finally, an answer. Finally, somebody somewhere that tells me, here's the answer. It's not arbitrary. It's not up for debate. It's not up to how I feel about it. It's not up to opinion. It's not up to the culture. It's not up to religions. Finally, somebody tells me what it takes to go to heaven when I die. 
And it's Jesus who said, because you believed in me, not your behavior. Your behavior should send you to hell. But because you believed in me, because you called me Lord, because you said, remember me, I forgive you. And this day, you will be with me in paradise. Behavior had nothing to do with it. It is belief in Jesus. And I'm telling you, it's the most wonderful, graceful thing in all this world that God has brought it down to the simplicity that if you want to go to heaven when you die, don't rely on yourself. Just trust Jesus. Somebody give God some praise and glory. Amen. It's so simple and it's so graceful and yet we think the other way is more tolerant we think the other way is more kind and Jesus says no that kind of arbitrary you be sincere you make the decision you determine your own goodness it's cruel and it leaves people hanging but my way is this day you will be with me no matter what you've done no matter who you are if you will put your faith and trust with me, I will do what no religion can possibly do. Come on. I will forgive you of your sin. All of it. 